Hey guys, Winamute here, and this is my dorm room. Today I'll be showing a different sort of tutorial. This is hardware, not Blender, but I think a little change of pace might help every once in a while. This was a cool project I came up with, a light-based alarm clock, because I left my alarm clock at home, and if you're like me and you have all of these fancy electronic toys, but you don't have a damned alarm clock, well, maybe this project will help. I'll be going over the electronics and the software in this video, though uh, I should point out that neither of these are particularly complicated given I know almost nothing about Arduino and very little about programming. So here's a quick demo of what it does. You power it, and then these LEDs turn on. Now, you can't really see it with this camera, but they get brighter and brighter. It may take a while, and that amount of time it takes is configurable in the uh, Arduino IDE. These are some ultra-bright LEDs I got for about 60 cents for the both of them. This Arduino Nano cost me maybe about $4, and this RTC module cost me about 2 I attached a battery to it as well. Uh, this is a CR2032 that cost me about 50 cents. So, uh, if we disregard the jumper cables, which cost about nothing, this total, this project in total was about seven dollars Canadian, which is what, like a dollar American? Yeah. Anyways, if you don't have an alarm clock and you have some time to wait for shipping from China, this is actually a pretty cool project to try for not very much. Now. The parts involved here are one, this, oh, you probably can't see that I'm pointing at it, one, this RTC module, which is basically an electronic clock. It keeps the time, this Arduino Nano, which has all of my code on it, and these two ultra bright warm white LEDs, which I got from a local electronic shop in Toronto. So, what's happening right now? Well, what I'm doing is feeding in a brightness value into these LEDs using this uh, Arduino Nano. Were I actually using the alarm clock function and not the demo, I would also be utilizing this uh, watch component to give this uh, Arduino Nano the time. However, right now, I'm just having it run off the Nano. I don't really need the time to show a demo. So what I'm having this do is I'm sending a brightness value into this, into these LEDs, which is a integer from 0 to 255, 255 being the brightest, and I'm incrementing that value by 1 every second. When I'm actually using it, I will have the starting time uh, at 6.45 and I will have it run for 15 minutes. And during those 15 minutes, that time will go from zero to 255. Simple. I just add, well, if I want it to go up every second, 60 times 15 gives 900. Um, and 255 over 900, whatever that is, you add that to the brightness value every second in order to get this to go up to 255 after 15 minutes. You don't even need to connect this to any external power, well, you do to uh, attach the LEDs, but uh, you can just connect this to a battery pack instead of, say, an uh, expensive laptop like this, because that's a little impractical. I will try to build a housing for this so I can actually see these red LEDs that are on both of these components. You can just cover them up with a small amount of aluminum foil or something like that, uh, but if it's annoying, uh, I don't really think there's a way to turn them off. So, next, the schematic.
Okay, so let me explain the code uh, as quickly as I can because there's really not that much to it. So the idea here is that we are taking the time from our RTC module, which just keeps um, like a very accurate second by second count. And then we're going to pass that value into, into our LEDs by uh, changing the voltage that they receive as a function of that time. So the first thing you want to do is when you take this code is uh, you want to uncomment this section and then you want to run it. And right now I don't have my nano connected to my computer, but once you do, or you can use whatever Arduino you like, just make sure to change that up in your tools and board. You need to set it, you need to set your Arduino, um, you need to set your RTC's time because it doesn't actually know the time yet. It will keep time for you for a year once you put the battery in, but first you have to set it. So make sure you change uh, these dates. So right now it is the 22nd of September, uh, 2019. And you want to try to get this number as close as you can. So you can check this number from your uh, system clock. I was looking for a way to actually set this just using the system time, but accessing that seems to be kind of difficult. So uh, I just have it set manually. It's not that much of a pain and it saves you a lot of work. So yeah, so we're just going to do that. Now make sure once you're done running this once and only once, Make sure to uncomment it again, otherwise, once you run it again, it will set that time. Uh, it will set your old time to this, and you do not want that to happen. Because, okay, say you set it at 11.05, and then you don't uncomment it and you run it again at 11.06, uh, it's going to reset it back to, it's going to reset the RTC back to, uh, oh, RTC stands for real time clock, by the way. It will set that back to 11.05, and you don't want that. So we want to just uncomment it, sorry, we want to comment it back out as soon as we're done setting the time. Uh, these are just some diagnostics you can use. You can open up the serial monitor and it will tell you that you are actually getting the correct time output. Uh, interestingly enough, it also gives you the temperature. I'm not sure why that's integrated into the uh, RTC, but I thought it was kind of cool. I'm not doing anything with it, I just kind of want to see what it gives. So yeah, there's that. Now we have our actual alarm clock. So how does this work? So let's uh, uncomment this. And then you want to run this. And that's pretty much all you have to do to actually make this work. So what does this mean? Now if the clock hits our wake up time and it's between, it's within one hour of our wake up time. So I set mine to 6.45 and it will take 10 minutes to get to its full brightness. So what that means is that we're going to set this um, as soon as it hits 645. So if it's between, if the hour is between six and six plus one and or seven, so if the hour is between six or seven, and if the minute is past uh, 645, then we want to have the brightness be a function of what time it is past uh, 645. So we're subtracting 45 from the minutes, and we're multiplying that by uh, some constant, and we also want to subtract um, the number of seconds we have from 0, 0. So just take that number of seconds and we'll multiply that by another constant, uh, ones that I have not calculated, which are a little bit unnecessarily precise because I don't think the uh, Arduino can even pass that precise of a voltage to the output pins. But yeah, so we need to make sure that happens. Uh, we also need to make sure, this is not probably not going to happen, but uh, if you have your brightness value be less than zero, that's kind of a problem and you don't want to do that. I think if you do that, it will just set the LED to maximum brightness and that kind of defeats the point of a gradual light up. And you also don't want the brightness to go too high. Again, I'm not sure what happens if it goes above 255. I think it just sets it to the maximum and does nothing. Finally, now that you have this brightness value in your code, um, and we'll print it out just so we can see it in our serial monitor again, which you can access by Control shift down or go to tools, you want to write that number to all of the pins that you have LEDs control, uh, attached to. Now, these pins are numbered 5, 6, and 7. On the Arduino, they're not actually numbered like that. 
and you want to look up at the uh, pinout for your actual Arduino to see which, uh, like, I think these correspond to D5, D6, and D7, but uh, that's different between uh, models, so you need to just search that up and just check which pins correspond to which numbers. And make sure you set that here, uh, right here where you're writing it, and also at the start, we, we have pins 5, 6, and 7 here. So this can power three LEDs into D5, D6, D7, um, and it's connected to ground always. And yeah, there we go. That is the code. I'll have this up somewhere down in the description, and uh, once you run it, I hope you enjoy it and I hope it works. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of tutorial, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll make a few more of them. See you next time.